Okay. So. Last we left off, we ventured further down into the caverns. Um, having rested for a short while uh, and getting a short rest, so actually, Puck, if you want to throw a short rest on, I don't know whether that matters. Um, we started the session by doing that. Um, before Ghost uh, and Puck ventured to the north of the caves. Um and found a draconic, uh, almost infiltrator-like uh, being, quite skulky, black scales hunched over, but didn't draw any attention to themselves. Um, rather, instead, listened out and um, could only hear them speaking in draconic. Which I believe, Ghost, you recorded somehow, or you uh, listened to what they were saying? So am I correct in saying that? Or you were thinking of doing something like that? I can't quite remember. Couldn't understand what they were saying, but it looked like they were patrolling, coming down to the river, then moving back to some area and talking to others, uh, indicating that there were a, uh, at least a, a group of them up that way. Deciding not to pursue that just uh, as of yet. Um, oh, you also would have noticed that I'm doing away with the gigantic map. Um, and we're going to just uh, have battle maps when they when they occur. Uh, makes it a bit easier than moving tokens around all the time. Coming back to the party uh, and letting them know that, we decided to put that on hold. Um, but you did investigate that footsteps and bound creatures, humanoids, were taken that way. Indicating that that might be where more of the civilians and... Farmers might be being held. Deciding to venture south, um, Kira and Molokov both had quite intense feelings of being scared uh, for Kira and help and pain for Molokov. Coming to a fork in the road, both extreme emotions were almost tugging the two in two different ways um having a quick look up to the help and hurt feeling you saw a cavern opening up into quite a colorful display of mushrooms and fungus on the rocks but Kira having the sense of help went to investigate and you found a reduced sized item being chased by some monstrosity of a draconic creature. A failed experiment, perhaps, but three mages toying with their prey, uh, obviously having reduced the size of the item. The party ran in to help, uh, fighting a ferocious battle with this, this creature and the three wizards, or mages, uh, of draconic influence, coming out victorious and having the Etten run away to the south. Trying to, uh, you also caught it in a beat of force, which was quite clever. Um, it coming out of the beat of force, its first instinct was to attack and kill, and so you took it out of the picture. So, we pick up from that battle, um, with the knowledge of three paths to take. Moving back up the caverns to the potential, uh, hostages and group of draconic infiltrators. Moving back to the fungus and mushrooms, uh, which was giving off the plea of hurt and help. Uh, Molokov would say that it's still present, but not as strong anymore. Or thirdly, uh, an Etten regrowing to full size at some point, perhaps, has run off to the south. So, before making the decision, your party is alone in this cave with a dead beast, um, some mages which you have already uh, had a scout over. They don't seem to have any insignia on them or anything, but they do carry quite a lot of this uh, lunar moonstone that is around. They seem to have it on their person. It's like, almost like they're collecting bits of this moon rock. Are they just on that? Are they like raw? 
like moon rock or are they like polished bits like are they shaped or are they are they just chunks of of rock you have a look at some and the majority of it is almost like they've got their daggers out and and pierce them off the the walls of this place um but yeah on one of them they, they have started to become polished they have started to become it's almost like they're collecting it for a certain use mm -hmm. um and they do get give off a little bit of light when they are polished in that way i love the fact that despite trying our best we always end up in a hell of a mess in some dark cavern in the middle of an underground tomb that we have no idea why we're here and how to get out certainly makes life interesting that's one word for it <sighs> i suppose there's nothing for it we just have to keep going until we get out find this moon spirit and Render aid as much as we can. We're still two days ahead. Hopefully. Fingers crossed, right? Fingers crossed. Hopefully they're still not quite ready to do their ritual. I, I think our presence is probably going to be found somewhat soon if, if the effects of it haven't already can't kill a number of people and have fights the way that we've had it without it eventually being found so they might be more on guard thankfully our friend who just ran off down the caverns might be enough of a distraction to buy us a little time let's hope it could just lead to an exit you're not wrong How's that scratch in the back of your head, Molokov? He'll probably um, relay that. Yeah, he's still getting a sense of of pain and and helplessness from the let's call it the eastern cavern. Um, north being the trail of the water, and south being where the Etten ran off to. Um, probably shows some interest in checking it out um but is open to the decision makers of the party today no i'm not opposed to trying to lessen someone or something's pain our main job here is to disrupt that sounds pretty disruptive stopping them doing whatever it is they're doing Maybe it's the caverns itself calling out for help. Did have a similar thought. It makes no sense to me, but I like it if it can help us on our course. It's, uh, I think it's far more concerning if it's something more <clears throat> inco in incorporeal that's in pain. A little bit harder to uh, work with that. Take a, a glance at the pseudo dragon sitting on Molokov's shoulder. Uh, some things just communicate differently, don't they? It'll run around a little bit, and you'll give it a bit of a scratch. Little glance over at Hera. They they definitely do. <laughs> Here it just messes up completely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, are we going to go and have a look up that other way then? I think we should. Sure. So, uh, kind of cleaning yourselves off a little bit, getting a little bit tired as we move further into the day, um, knowing that the full moon will be rising tomorrow night. Um, so you have a full night and day till it till it rises into the sky moving up into the eastern caverns um you start seeing 
all along the walls, this uh, what's that mushroom and fungus starting to grow. It gives off a, like a, a luminescent glow to it. Molokov will talk to his pseudo dragon. This is uh, it's more prevalent down here. Walking through about five minutes of, of a narrow cavern opens up into a almost circular spherical room with a crevice down the middle of it almost like a, a dip in the mountain that just falls one like previously you've seen goes to unknown depths since you get in this room everyone but molokov is almost peaceful you kind of just you feel your shoulders relax a bit you feel you inhale and exhale just a bit deeper, almost like when you've just had a mint and the breath is cold. Uh, can I get perception checks from all of you, please? So, Reese, can you just clarify, this is the northern way we've gone? Uh, like northeast. Is... So northern northeast, will be yeah, yeah. Uh, where you and Ghost investigated. This is okay. not the way you've chosen right now. This okay, is cool. the... Yeah, no, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, north, so northeast. Yeah, thank you. And sorry, it was an investigation. Perception for this one. Perception. Cool. Uh, modified 20. Nice. So a good way to start back. Yeah, nice. Uh, and Hera? That is a 12. Nice. Hera and Ghost, do you notice that it's almost uh, artful, uh, artistic, that this cave has got all these colourful uh, growing plants around it um but Puck, you notice that on the other side of the crevice um is a humanoid figure slouched up against a rock but it's missing its bottom half it looks like it has been ripped in half what's interesting though is that coming out from its body is not blood is not intestines or anything but it's almost like spores and vines and you look to the top half of it and this mushroom like creature is resting up against a rock with a a almost crown of uh fungus as a atop its head uh, i'll show you what you see here uh, and you see the taller one of these two damn my kid is so cool all right so yes uh whether or not puck recognizes it it is a my I don't think it would, yeah um this this mushroom figured uh man that is like i said half has been ripped off and you see almost like a, a trail leading down the crevice down here um and that's when you you get the sense of pain and and uh crying out for help and it has not made eye contact you can see it's slowly starting to move but it's it's looking down at itself um as you find yourselves on the top ledge of the cavern does anyone else see that well once you pointed out it's clear that they can he's not hidden of anything and 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 feel that i i, I think I've, i'm getting that sense that you had before of the pain do you see that man-ish vegetable creature <laughs> once he points it out here and goes you will you'll see him I, I know I'm deal. seeing things, but I, I can't comprehend what they mean. This doesn't feel the same as that other cavern with the, the mushroom spores. Hmm. I, w I will say as well as to the south of the map, it uh, the c cavern continues, and you see quite a r bright luminescent glow coming from behind that uh, down the south. It's a uh quite a chasm down there we should be careful but uh should we approach well it seems peaceful 
if she's alive. Uh, okay, I'll go forward. Sure. Um, yeah, as you kind of approach, you can almost feel the air current going down, you know, like uh, almost like an underwater waterfall. You feel that this air is not sucking down, but it's a big drop. I have a quick look at these glowing mushrooms just out of curiosity. But... Sure. Give me a, um, a nature or survival. Mm -hmm. Your choice. Uh, I think they're both the same for me. Let's go with nature because I... Yeah, let's go with nature. So it's a 15. 15. You kind of like approach the edge of the chasm and, you know, notice these a clump of the mushrooms to your side and you take a look and just kind of investigate them a little bit. Uh... They resemble the shape of mushrooms you've seen traveling through the forest. Um, you've seen in taverns and stuff, but the glow is something you haven't really encountered before. It's a, a property of them that is definitely unique to this area, and they do give off a little bit of light. But with a 15, you can kind of see that their glow kind of dulls as it gets to the stem. And for some reason in your mind, you connect that with the half man on the other side you can see that the mushrooms almost starting to die as they get closer to the the rock hmm okay uh possibly connected we... possibly just something in this room yep i'm gonna have a little peek over the chasm as well to see if i can see anything down there sure you you look over and a pebble or something you know as you put a it goes and just Keeps going. The sound disappears doesn't eventually. Wake, doesn't wake up a Balrog. Um, no, the orange glow oh, does not emit from <laughs> from this one. That would be a really cool. As like, you knock a, a skeleton uh, yeah. down, <laughs> and the wizard just goes, <laughs> "Why do we bring this halfling Ooh. along?" Fool of a puck. <laughs> uh, I just imagine the lighting of like. Like, you know, you've got these beautiful glowing ethereal mushrooms and these, like, red fire yep. demons. That'd be so cool. Anyway, cool. All right, well, uh, shall we go across and get a bit closer? I mean, I think that's your domain. I'll look at Hera and say, well, maybe uh, you and I could have a look. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. I'm like, oh, we'll probably wow. Well, Puck was in this to get what sort of let him go down first. And then just sort of get close to the well not maybe not too close to the edge. I'll um hand just Hera me. my grappling gun. And Puck with his boots of striding and springing, which I am I attuned to those yet? Um yes, well we had a short rest, so yeah, that would be an hour of attuning to them. Cool. Puck is just going to so sort of like test it a little bit, like jump up and down a little bit on the spot because he's like, ah, uh, is it smart to jump across a chasm is the first thing you do? And then he's going to kind of, yeah, move back a little bit and then just go and leap across. Uh, yeah, do I need to make any kind of check for that, Reese? Um, so. So. <laughs> <laughs> As you kind of just jump up and down, and you, you, at first it doesn't feel like it's going to give you any extra mm. oomph, but you kind of do that thing where like you, you first bounce on a trampoline and it's that, and then you go a little bit higher and a bit mm. higher. And you're like, okay, I just need, I need the momentum with this thing. Um, and you get your run up and leap across. As you do, you get quite close to the ceiling. Um, and you almost in slow motion leap across this chasm in a, you know, striding motion and you see the scale of the creature that is hanging above it um so as it notices this thing running past it can i get you to make a dexterity saving throw oh it's, that hopefully is fine i'm very good at those i i know you're very good at those <laughs> no that's that's um what's that 13 plus 8 so 21 okay as you see this creature hanging from the ah. ceiling 
uh, you kind of make eye contact with it and it makes eye contact with you as you it, it like goes to move and doesn't move fast enough before you land on the ground there I'll um, send it to the group as a uh, grick oh, don't do this to us again Reese. two campaigns in a row as Puck lands he's just like shit look at that <laughs> like, look yeah. at he point and, like, like lands and points <laughs> He starts getting his weapons ready. He's good. Take your weapons out, and this creature <laughs> starts moving, uh, and we will roll initiative. Yeah. <laughs> That's like slowly sneaking through a cavern, and then like something else was also sneaking, and you both end up like side to side, and then like, huh! yeah. <laughs> Fuck. I just love that, that slow motion moment of just like the gliding past, and being like, ah! <laughs> uh, slowly getting wider and wider. Oh, fuck. Okay, let's um. I love the lucky feet. Well, not feet. I guess it's just a feature for halfling. But man, it's like I roll a one on my initiative. I'm like, oh no, I don't have to keep it. So it's good. You're a halfling. Oh yeah, yeah. that yeah. halfling luck, not the lucky feet. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's oh, it's sorry. so ridiculously those. powerful. Oh, that's good. Okay, ghost. Uh, that's a 16 for me. Hera. Uh, that's a natural 1 plus 1, so that's 2. Fuck. 20, modified. That's right. Now the natural 1's out of the way. It's gone. <laughs> this is true. This is true. All right, so as this oh. this snake-like creature with a beak of a bird and talons coming out in four uh, different directions, almost predator-style, reaches out, uh, you see a little bit of, uh, you know, mushroom leftovers dripping from its, uh, its maw. Um, we enter initiative, uh, but Puck, you skid to the stop and yell out to the rest of them, pointing out where this creature is, um, but you start the round. Yeah, Pucky is going to reach down and grab out the hand crossbow and like forlornly feel around for the one that he just gave to Hera and, <laughs> uh, before he sort of spin moves and doo -doo, he's going to shoot twice with his uh, oh, shoot twice? No, he's going to steady aim and shoot once. Sure, sure. All right, so that gives me advantage on the roll. Uh, does a... 28 hit does a 28 hit <laughs> um look it, it pretty much pierces it directly down its throat <laughs> i rolled a 19 oh wow, wow. nice ac35 yeah, <laughs> yeah. Was that yeah. ac35 <laughs> yeah either michael's sitting real still or he's frozen he's, All right, he's so frozen. That, it's not we standard. just need to take damage uh we sure will damage. Be. yep uh that is 7, 13, uh, what's it be? 19 points of piercing. Oh, oh sorry. Nice. It's not all technically all piercing, but if that matters, let me know. Um, no, that doesn't matter. Yeah, cool. I just realized, I'm like, oh, it's not actually all piercing because some of it's sneak attack, which is just damage. Just damage, it's gotcha. Not, yeah. Uh, yeah, cool. Uh, uh, awesome. And yeah, you, you get a solid strike yeah. on this thing. Is it like, it almost follows you like a motion camera and you're just like, yeah, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I can't move, so that is my turn. Perfect. All right. It brings us to its turn uh, as it kind of reels back from this arrow that's just been slotted down its throat. Uh, it'll give out like a uh, almost a growl, uh, which echoes down the chasm and then comes from the other direction as well as the second one makes itself known. Okay. Why is there always two? <laughs> uh, I reckon this one's <laughs> going to slither. Go on, Michael. Or not? So I, I do have. A, I have a question though. If I yeah. can ask if he's. So I. I was not aware. I'm not aware of this other one until after my turn. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. That's cool then. Don't worry about it. They've got they've got the hiding thing in the rocks that makes them very hard to to see. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's all good. That's all good. Um, but this one will slither down 
and put itself next to you um one attack with its tentacles if that attack hits okay sure so it's going to attack with its tentacles um as they kind of spread out and then come piercing down on you um puck and that's a natural one that will miss so that misses um if that attack hits okay cool so it tries to grapple you uh and you kind of just push off these tentacles as they um as it slithers around you but this one is going to make its way up to Hera sliding round and go one attack with its tentacles that is a plus four so 16 to hit that'll do it so that will be nine slashing damage nine um as the tentacles kind of start gripping into your arms and you feel it like peeling off your flesh as well and then it's going to because it has you in your grass now it's going to come in with a beak and try and make a beak attack Uh, 10 plus foot, so that's a 14 to hit. 14 is my AC, yep. 14, so that'll be 5 points of piercing damage as the beak smashes into you. Yowzers. Where's your mage armor, Dale? Put on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, puts my AC from 11 to 14. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> I'm a wizard. What do you want from me? I'm oh, a wizard, Harry. Uh, you are holding a grappling gun, though, so do with that as you will. But Ghost uh, comes around as you see these two snake-like creatures whoosh, both go to each member of your party. <coughs> as you inhale a bunch of spores. <laughs> yeah. Don't do mushrooms. <laughs> oh, my... God damn it! <laughs> um, uh, I don't have weapons. What do I do? Um, so your, I, your brain is your weapon, ghost. Can give Envy a, a tap on the hindquarters and and just lunge in. Uh, and I'll make a, um, I'll pull out one of my light hammers and make a general swipe at it as Envy like comes and tries to sort of shove it off Hera. Yeah. So I think. Is, is here grappled? Did I, did no, I miss no, there? it's not grappled. It can only make a beak attack once its tentacles have grabbed, though. So it kind of like does that beak attacks and then reels back. Yeah, cool. Um, so Envy will go for the shove attack. Uh, sure, sure. Yeah. We don't want a repeat of what happened in the other oh, cabin. Damage. Definitely not. <laughs> Puck rolls his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> um, shove. That's in a contested strength slash athletics. It is indeed. Oh, buddy. What'd you get? That is a... Oh, that is a not good. Uh, it's a plus two, so five. Yeah, it's a 22. Um, as Ghost kind of bounces into this thing and it doesn't even reshift its coil. It just kind of like turns itself to Ghost, uh, to Envy. And my hammer attack probably went tentacle fucking... Deep in its arm is a five to hit. Five to hit. No, it just, it, just it grazes across it. I um, mean, you notice it's almost like a scale kind of uh, uh, skin, and your hammer just gleams off it. Uh, and then I'll I'll kick off Envy and run around. Oh, run around its backside. Sure, um, flanking it for any intents and purposes. Is that all? That is all. All right, Hera, you're up. Shit. Sorry. Thought that was better. Um, oh, that's awfully close to the edge. Yeah, maybe I'll <laughs> stay just there. Stay where I am, and oh. now the barrel comes. <laughs> <laughs> we did talk about dropping a body off the side. 
This is true. Just didn't think it would be here. So about Vargir. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's just Clan Big slipped. Now remember, you do have those advantage rolls at your disposal at any point. Like... Ghost has got its attention. Sure. It is reeling round and trying to figure out what which direction to face at the moment. So you know it's not fully yeah, focused yeah, on yeah. you. Yeah, gotta make the most of that. Um, and so, um, almost want to do like a half look at the crossbow to sort of think and oh, I could maybe get out of here. And see go sort of get involved and, and think for a minute. And I was like, I've got to stay. Tuck it to the side. Um, I'm going to cast a. It's got to be a touch spell, I guess. Uh, I'm going to cast an inflict wounds on him. Oh, nice. Um, and I'll just wait for it to almost do like a quick turn back to where Ghost is, and I'm just going to sort of try and grab onto the back of back of it and just like dig my claws in and pulse this necrotic energy into him. Very nice. Roll protect. Uh, is it at five? Uh, that's going to be 25 to hit. That, oh, yes, definitely. That'll hit. Yeah, you, you, your, your claws almost, you... you put out a couple of those sharp nails and then just use that as the vessel of this necrotic energy. So when you're walking past the couch and the paws come out and yes, nowhere, yes. land on your foot. And, uh, it's just going to be 18 points of necrotic Oh, damage. very nice. Good hit. Yeah, it screams and squeals as this necrotic energy pulses through it and it kind of like lifts its head up doesn't know where to look it's now getting almost eaten from the inside uh it's not used to that kind of attack And uh, I'll just sort of <sighs> Yeah, I guess I'd I'll probably um try and get a beat on what the mushroom man is if he's had any change or anything. Just sort of like get into that, like do the thing, and then just sort of think about what we were doing here in the first place, and just sort of look over and see if he still looks like he's sitting there doing nothing. Sure. Um, give me a a hard and fast. I'm gonna say perception from this distance. Okay. Yeah. Whoa. Perception. Uh, that's a twenty-four. Twenty-four. Um, you can see that it is like coming to consciousness and looking around, but. It is, it is still focused on half of its body missing um, and you probably just glancing over you will notice that the one fighting Puck has got spores of mushroom coming out of its mouth uh, like these are its attacker. Uh, interesting. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. yeah. Um, it does um, not appear that he is controlling them in any way. No, yeah, okay, gotcha. If that's what you were trying to uh, Yeah, there's definitely a little bit of possible teamwork going on in my mind there gotcha uh, um, no that, that perception okay, check okay, will okay, show okay, that yeah. it is still in pain um and these might be yeah, the causes yeah. of pain uh but top yeah, of the round yeah. puck yes uh puck is going to uh draw out the rapier uh-huh and take a swing with that right in front of him mm-hmm that's a 
on the wrong page, sorry. That's a 19 to hit. 19 will hit, go for damage. Uh, and that's 10 points of piercing. Nice. Uh, and then I'm going to bonus action crossbow expert shoot my crossbow in its face again. Oh, nice. Go for it. Uh, that's 27 to hit. Twist that, that'll and... definitely hit. <laughs> Uh, and that is uh, sorry, nine points of piercing. Nice. Uh, how do you want to take this thing out? Yeah, I reckon Puck uh, stabs it and kind of cuts off one of the thing, one of the tentacles off its arm. Yeah. Uh, and as he does, he's going to like scoot just for flavor's sake to like the other side of it, kind of thing. Yeah. And then he's just going to, as it like reels back in pain, and then it comes back towards him to take a bite. He's just going to go straight into the mouth. And then it's just going to topple over and fall down into the chasm. You know, I'm just going to make it smaller and smaller. <laughs> as it falls. Yeah. Oh, actually, I will, I will, I will have moved. I think I'm going to move to there. And then, oh, actually, with jumping, I can't jump further than my movement allows. Oh yeah, right. So you could, I think, in com like in combat, like yeah, yeah. So I can't. Hang on. Sorry, let's just... I didn't look at the rule for a standing jump. In sure, 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 sure. Uh, half that distance. Perfect. Okay. Well, if I don't move, then if that was just flavor. Yep. Yeah, that's what can... that's like you like moving around yeah, it. Yeah, 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 that's yeah, fine. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, cool. All right. In that case, I can, I can jump three times that distance, three times my normal distance. So my normal jump is, uh, if I, if I get 10, sorry, just gotta, I got to word this out. If I get 10 feet of movement, yep. I can jump 30 feet with these boots. I believe so. Yes. But if I don't move, it is half that distance, which is 15 feet, which yep. Five, ten, fifteen. But uh, I think I'm just going to have to move to here, and then on my next turn I can jump across. Gotcha. So right, you kind of like me. you're used to the bounciness of the of the the boots, and you move up to the edge, and you kind of like have that. You know, you don't take the step you need to to make the jump, and you're like, mm. oh shit, I I should have kept that momentum going, and you kind of just yes. hesitate. Um, Again, looks longingly at his uh, <laughs> his grapnel gun <laughs> that he gave to Hera, and he's just sort of like in his head, he's like, "Never again, never again." Uh, and that's my turn. Nice. Uh, that'll bring us to um, the Grix turn. Um, and oh, what have we got? We got Envy pushing it, and Hera necroticking it. Um, I'm just going to roll a dice to decide. It turns its attention to the metallic dog. Uh, and we'll go for the uh, tentacle attack first. Not great. It's a 12 to hit. Sorry, was that 12? Yes. I'm just dying As you're over trying to here. survive over um, there. <laughs> AC 15. AC 15. So the tentacles try and wrap around uh, Envy and almost slide off its uh, her metallic body um, as it does not grab hold. So it's going to reassess what it's going to do here, and it's going to try. Hmm, what are we going to do? Trying to hunt, right? No, I reckon it's just going to take a start there. I reckon it's feeling tough. So that brings us to Ghost. Uh, if you can make it through talking through a turn. I think I've I think I've even now. It's getting worse though. Um and Envy's gonna lash back straight away, retaliating to the, the tentacle attack. Yep, that's an attack or a shove? It's just an attack. Yep. Uh twenty to hit. That'll hit. Yes. That is plus three eight points of force damage. Very nice. Yeah, you like smash uh, into it and like snaps one of its tentacles, not fully off like Puck did, but it's just kind of like hanging there limp now. Wonderful. Um, I guess I could swing it at myself. I'll pull out, yeah, pull out the second hammer yep. from behind me, um, flip it to the side that has a brand on uh, on one end, and just pop up. 
Just try and make two strikes against it. Nice. Go for no, it. No, I can't. Because that was my bonus action. One strike. One strike. Uh, functionally flanking? Yes, you're, fun you're, you're flanking, so advantage. The first roll was okay. Second roll was a natural one. Uh, so that was a 16 to hit. 16 will make contact. Uh, as Envy has opened up some wounds, you bring both hammers around, go for damage. <laughs> Five points of bludgeoning damage. That's enough. How do you want to take it down? Hey! Um, probably like reeling from the last strike where it kind of like all slipped out through tentacles. Tried to counter for that, overcorrected, but then Envy's latch onto it causes it to move into the strike. Uh -huh. I caught it. Takes me by surprise as I'm like, oh, it connected. Um, and <laughs> very similar to Puck, kind of watches it tumbles into the crevice sure you're pushing it off as well yeah right. sorry hero no harvesting this time <laughs> as the second grick uh falls down the chasm and silence remains again uh, i'm slimy Really, oh, okay. really, uh... yeah, you in one piece? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, fine, fine over here. Uh, that looks like it stings. Are you okay? Like a fucking beak on that thing. Um, I believe I have. Uh, yeah, I think I will. Oh. Who's that paladin's lay on hands? <laughs> uh, save it. Come here. Um, goes to like a, a little more like boy, like 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 motherly, like let, come here, let me bandage you up, kind of thing. Sort of tugs your arm and scratches behind his neck, draws a glyph on the side of your arm, um, and with a flash of his eyes, it uh, dissipates. So you can have. Oh, I haven't used this ability in a while. Uh, you can have... A number of d4 is equal to my proficiency bonus worth of healing. Which is... 3. You may have 3d4 healing. This one's free. But you're in charge of building the bridge for us to get over there. Oh. It clicks the neck. It's always the left side, isn't it? I, I get the same thing. It's just, oh, it's, just a little. It's... Um, okay. Uh, let me. If you drop it, <laughs> oh, oh, wait, it's it's yep, almost, but yeah, there you yeah. Thank you. I do. Uh, do, uh, do I aim at the roof or the wall? Uh, what what is uh, is it like a swing? What are we doing here? <laughs> It depends if you're getting over on your own, then I would aim it up at the the roof and use it as a swing, but are you trying to get the others over as well, or...? Yes, I suppose. I suppose it's a good idea. I also uh, like that oh, here no. has gone to the most widest gap. <laughs> I literally just thought about that. I was like, that's the widest spot between the things, of all the things. I'm like, what am I doing? I'm just off. I, I, um, I'm going to... I'm going to move out of the way try and shoot here uh -huh. like this that, that's this why he tries to move out of the way face <laughs> sort of thing yeah. um from the uh, actually i'll take a step back so that i'm a bit closer to that rock thing there 
imagine this um, like aiming and then like you know reshuffling like people were playing golf and then they, they aim and then they they reshuffle their feet again and i'm just like one one arm lent up on envy's shoulder just watching <laughs> Quite good. Do I have to make that like an attack roll? Um, I'm I'm trying to think of what what <laughs> you're going Wait, to do it's here. It's gonna be a dex check to see yeah, how well you can. I think it's it, gonna right? be a dex check. Yeah. Just a dex check. Just okay. make Just... sure you hold on to it. <laughs> 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 okay. I'm just in the way too tight now, just like shaking a little bit. I've just seen that the pistol grip shotguns and people fire them, they just go flying over their shoulders because yeah. the gun's just gone. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say it's a DC of 10, which is simple. I'm going to use my inspiration. Oh, yes. So that. Molokov comes over and flicks the safety off. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, uh, yeah. how, how are we going to how are we going to do it? I, it's it's got to be make it. Yeah, it's got to be Molokov coming over and just attaching the rope to the fucking thing. Yeah, okay. To change, to change from my from my natural one. That's better. Because <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to lose Puck's cool toy. <laughs> so I'm gonna not take the natural one and we're even going to roll the different dice that's a lot better that'll be a 19. nice you you wait yeah you you almost shoot it uh and molokov comes over and just adjusts a couple of things and goes you you got this uh and you just take a breath it's, it's like casting a spell right uh and you shoot it and the impact is is you know you definitely feel it it definitely shocks you a bit but it takes hold um and my question is are you using it to propel yourself over or are you using it to make a solid rope yeah so that's why i took a step back to be closer to this i'm then gonna try and like hook the like rope around something with, like hook the the um yeah. crossbow but onto something or, or like try and lodge it between that's a, fine i think between Molokov and Varga, they can use their strength to secure this properly um, and allow yeah. everyone to, uh, yeah, get it, get across. It's, 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 you know, 20 feet or so, so no checks required to cross this rope, but I think that the potential of losing the gun was more thrilling than dropping into a chasm yourself. I was so... I... I was so worried I was going to lose the gun. <laughs> um, Ghost and Envy, are you following that way or are you getting over another way? Uh, we'll follow over. I'll I'll take the time to get the briefcase out and be like, come on, and you hop. Yep. Put him into the, into the bag of holding and then get myself over the nice. whole time very quietly whispering, don't look down, don't look down, don't look down, it's just... Just a just a rope, it's just a thing. It's always a thing. Looking straight up at the ceiling. Yep. <laughs> you know, for the fun of it, give me a wisdom save. No checks required, he says. I mean, when you give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, brilliant! Yeah, you look down. little bit of liquid comes out <laughs> uh but you do you do get across even if you might be in a different state of mind um so you find yourselves on the side of the chasm now i'm assuming approaching this uh myconid <clears throat> mushroom man half torn apart um it's kind of you see as he's leaning into the rocks some of his body has actually almost started to attach itself to the rocks you can see a little bit of a pulse trying to like connect him back into the the earth himself uh it is looking down it doesn't seem to be aware that you're standing next to it um what would you like to do not not dead very slow movements very uh 
subdued, it seems. I will go prop and squat in front of it. Yeah. And look at it. Does it look back? It. You can see that it has eyes. They're, they're, they're glossed over. It's almost like two black pearls. Um, it doesn't seem to have pupils or anything, but it seems to be looking at its wounds. Um, it seems to be looking within itself, but it doesn't seem to look at you. Um, a couple of times it might pass by you, but it seems like it is just fully concentrating on itself. Can we... Can anyone help it? Uh, I, I mean... I can help people. This is new. Uh, gear. More up your alley. Um, you could do a nature or survival check with advantage. Uh, with I guess help. I think those are the same for me. Oh. I'm really good at that. That's surprising. Okay. 21. 21. Vagi will probably go, oh, yes, I, uh, I've heard of these creatures. One's grown in the Underdark. They tend to stay down here. They, uh, I don't know too much about them, but for all intents and purposes, they are plant they are um part of nature themselves much like we are maybe if you could um i don't know do you have any water or any anything we can f feed it like you would if it was a plant in your house i left my water skin with the prisoners mm. i've got mine i'll uh sprinkle a bit of water on it you just bring a bit of water on it, and Ghost should probably picks up first, but the, the rest of you see it as well, that, that it does react to it. It almost almost entails a little bit of a breath. Um, and then as it exhales, a kind of a thin layer of cloud just emits from some of its pores. Um, can you all make wisdom saves for me, please? Uh, yeah, please. Mm. That is a five. Five. Six. Era? Eighteen. Ghost? Thirteen. Thirteen. As you see it kind of moving and the tentacles, or not tentacles, but like, you know, uh, what do you call them? Like little sprouts and stuff. Tendrils. Tendrils. Tendrils start to kind of like move and flitter in the wind that isn't there that's all you see ghost and Hera but Puck you hear in your mind as it kind of tilts its head and those black eyes meet yours and then you feel that it is looking at you um, and in your head you hear you are not of this place a surface dweller I look around at the others they don't seem to have heard it you can yeah you can clearly see that they're kind of like oh looking at this thing um and you didn't see its mouth move or anything yeah but you feel a kind of a warm fuzz as it talks to you and in, in your head i'll try and reply in my head like i'll just think, sure yeah see what happens yeah uh yes we're from the surface you're from it, it seems to have received it um, and you get that warm fuzz. It's also almost like um, when you walk into a warm room after being out in the cold, you just get that sense of fuzz down your spine. And uh, it goes, a surface dweller, but you have no bounds. You were here to hurt my kind and the Moon Mother. We are here, he's again thinking. Yep. Uh, and I'm going to look at the others and I'm going to point at my head for a second. See if they do anything. 
uh, like I point my head at it. Uh, we are here to help the Moon Mother. Oh. To stop what is happening. As you point to your head, what do you, the other two of you do? Um, well, I suppose I, if we're just sort of standing here and sort of looking at it, um, I would have been just sort of almost trying to take in as much details about it, sort of just trying to work out what it is, having not really seen anything. Probably would have noticed that Puck was looking at it quite intently, obviously not really working out what's going on, but if, he, if he's gone like that and he's almost like staring at it while, as if in conversation, I'll probably make the connection that he's telepathically yeah. communicating with this is. And so I'll probably just take a step back and, and wait almost just sort of politely as if as if they were having an out loud conversation sure uh, just and, sort of and ghost i think i might have had one hand on the um the handle of the pistol but then seeing puck being you know comparatively relaxed and then make a motion just sort of relax myself and just watch and wait sure um so neither of you uh attempt to be part of this conversation um is what I'm more asking. Oh, I see. I, I did think about it. I no, I think your reaction is is, is valid. Um, if if anything, and I don't know how this is necessarily going to work, but I would still like to take the same actions. But if I can, I would like to at least maybe try and listen and see okay. if I can. Can, if, if I, I'm going to not be looking at Puck, I'm just going to be staring at the... Sure. Whatever it's... Um, you can give me a wisdom check yeah. then, please. Let's just see if I can pick up any... Yeah, any frequencies? Any frequencies. <laughs> yeah. radio. Hey, it's Undernark 91.0. We're here with... It. <laughs> Um, wisdom check is going to be at 15. 15. You stare, um, and you feel that this thing's got a pretty big brain on it. Um, it's going to take a bit to listen into its thoughts. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. I can uh, pick up that there's a big thought there, but I can't yeah. get through just from... Yeah. Gotcha. Interesting. But it responds to you, Puck. Yes. And it says, to help the Moon Mother would be to help the mountain. They have come in. They have torn. They have taken. And they plan on doing something. It hurts us. We hurt so much. I will respond out loud. We are here to help. How can we help? It kind of props itself up a bit and now notices the other two standing here and it will only speak into your heads but if you speak out loud it will be able to hear your replies um as you all kind of get that fuzz in your heads and it kind of looks behind it in a way pointing south through that cavern you will find her and you will find them Many magics surround them, but they have taken my people. He looks back out to the way that you came through and he says, they control us with my bone. And he looks down and you can see like his almost collarbone is missing, like a chunk has been not even cut out, ripped out. They hold control over the Mykonid. I am no longer their sovereign. Control the Mykonid. And you can control uh, their production, their work, their infestation. And you all hear that. The 
using your people. Yes. To create the sickness. Yes. Harvesting. You see, you now all feel sadness. If we get the collarbone, or whatever it is, back, mm. are you dying? Can can you take back control? You get the collarbone. We'll call it that. The bone. Let's just call it the bone. Yeah. You get yeah, the bone. Sure, sure. And you give them back free will. I don't know how long I have, but they will listen to me if I can control them. You feel almost that that energy just leaving him as he's talking. I'm going to look at Hera and I'm going to take out a potion of healing and say, do you think this will help? What I understand Although these beings are alive and I mean technically closer relations to what we would call humanoids uh, in America plants, I don't believe they heal in the same ways. I think almost if we do return this bone to it, it might still be to right or at least we can get it to it and we can communicate, but I think like any plant, he just needs time to regain his strength. With his people helping him, the other Mycanoids, he will be able to rebuild himself. They are quite a um, persistent creature, I could say. Grow in the meekest of conditions. Do you, I look back at him. Mm. Do you need more water? Hmm. It'll help for the moment, but it okay, will not. I'm gonna em- sure. Yeah. I'm gonna empty out my water skin for him. You empty it out around, and you do feel a bit of like relief, um, and more spores come out into the air. Um, they seem to be unaffecting you guys though, um, and you can tell it's by his choice. As you all get this, these feelings and emotions, think. Thank you. Uh, this will sustain for now, but it was not a permanent solution. The mother allows us to thrive in here, and she is ill. They wish to use her and our connection to reach a place beyond here. Then they are harvesting us. He just starts repeating that harvesting using. Mm. The bone is that way, and I'll point back to the north, I guess, on this map. They use it to take our, uh, he won't say young, like our um, sproutlings or something, he'll say. And that is what is poisoning the water. But and then, and then he'll, that way? Yeah, it, yeah. yeah, he puts, <laughs> just is back into the cave that you came from. They, yeah. Behind him, he says, that is where the mother lies and where they have taken our old and our fit to protect. Control the bone Sound. and you control the myconid. Sounds like that. We have to go back that way. Uh, thank you. Kind of nod and you feel gratitude. Um, he will also say... Uh, Sovereign Lurabar will remember this deed. We are uh, L U R A B U R Lurabur. Uh, and he says, uh, "Our connections run deeper than the con- uh, the the location we're in, and you will be remembered." But we do not have long. They continue to butcher. They are close to their goal. I can feel the mother's pain, and that's when you all get a sense of, like, almost sorrow uh, filter through you. <laughs> Better be quick. Alright. I turn back around. 
back the other way. Should do our best to free the people. Make it easier once we get to the moon rather as well. Yeah. And we said we were here to disrupt. That sounds like a pretty good disrupt disruption. Well, it really sounds like a win-win to me. Board. Exactly. Ticking all sorts of boxes. So yeah, you uh, get the sense that if, if you so choose, like going south from here will get you to the the main cave. But we have a mission race. If we go now, the ships aren't even here. Like we're we have no backup, we have nothing. Uh, that was a risk we took when we came here, wasn't it? I'm just saying that we can go and disrupt this thing and there's still time before the the ritual is meant to take place. And then we can come back and fight it on more even ground. I agree. I think it was the Northern Passage for the Skulk as well. Say again, do? I, we just, I'm just saying we do have a whole night and a whole day until at least before they begin this ritual. I, I don't know about you, but I can use a small or rather large mist before we perhaps approach the Moon Mother. Yes, maybe we can try and steal this thing and then have a get back here and have a rest. You, yeah, you. When you say that, you'll feel him again into your minds and say, "Whilst here, I can provide sanctuary." Um, and by here, he kind of gives a general gist of the area, um, meaning that if you choose to rest in a in a secure place, he, he will make sure that it is. Safe. I can only do be watching over us. It's good to have friends. All right. We might not have an escape plan, but it sounds like we might have an army. Yes. Yep. I think those are better odds. Seems to give a so. sigh and more spores come out as he yeah. leans back. The, the yeah. water did suffice for the time being, but it seems like yeah. he's still quite exhausted. All right. Uh, someone have some rope. I feel like uh, most people do. Yeah. Chink. Ah. I'm going to tie a piece of uh, rope around. Uh, is it you hold on to the other end? Tie a piece of rope around uh, the immovable rod. Oh yes. And then Puck is going to go up here, swing across, like shoot shoot his grappling hook, swing across, <laughs> and close to the top of the other side, he's going to lock off the grappling, the, lock off the. Uh, immovable rod yep so that people can swing across it's not a particularly high cave no no so whoever's last can just keep hanging hang on to the rope until everyone else has gone across i think if it's like a 50 foot rope it probably yeah well, whatever i can always get it back to you if you, e you dropped e it. easily done okay uh so you're making your way out of this cave yeah i would like to look here though uh sh that's just Part of the map just goes to a dead end. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah, cool. No worries. All good. Um you know, yes, little little crevices and stuff, okay. like you know, yeah, that it goes around, yeah. but the natural cave. Yeah. All good. So you kind of make your way back out, leaving yeah. this luminescent cave behind you. Now you you're by yourselves again, away from the sovereign. Uh and the feeling of sorrow and pain kind of drops a bit. Um it'll still remain with Molokov a bit more prevalent, but you kind of almost get your senses back uh you don't feel like you're in a in a dream state in a in a hallucinogen or or anything you're just kind of like oh that feels everything thing feels normal again all right let's go get this bone yes something that so that man was saying Makes me wonder how much of a connection those microloids might have with what the place these guys are trying to get to. Maybe. Maybe it's something to do with the Underdark? 
just two of them. We just left that room and no, I feel health different in that. You know what I mean? I'll say that like, yeah, it's more noticeable leaving that you're like, oh, our states were a little mm. bit altered in there than when you get in uh, and it was like, you didn't notice it changing so much. Hmm. All right, let's be somewhat quick about this then. I don't think he has a lot long, a lot of time left without help. Oh, I can go first. So my question to you is, right. which direction are you choosing to go? So back into well, the fire. yeah, uh, north, back to where we were coming. That's that's where he indicated they'd taken. He indicated out of his cave. Path. Um, oh, so not necessarily not necessarily any direction but back the way you came as in you just entered his cave and if you want to pass through his cave you're going to get to uh, the moon mother apparently okay well we probably want to go to the other area of strong emotion then that's been yeah. done okay. that, that was, the, was the other area of strong emotion ah yeah okay so your options I here. Well what the options were, yeah. Yeah. So your options yeah. here. Uh, you you kind of getting out of this mushroom cave. Um, you can head north to where you saw traces of people being carried, led um, through the river and stuff, and you saw a guard that was posted um, that seems to be talking to a group of people. Or you can go south which is where the tiny Eton ran off to, um, and you have not explored there at all. And so, just to clarify, yep. south out of this cavern, supposedly is directed to the Moon Mother, that's different to the return and go south the way that Eton yep. went. Yeah, different tunnel, yeah. Well... We have time. And a plan. I think I have something. Uh, hold on a moment, and I'll open the briefcase and start pulling out some tools and contraption. I pull the, it's like a neck ring that you've seen me wear a couple of times. There's a glyph on it and I've pressed it and it's changed my appearance, but I pull it off um, and pull out another piece, which is a uh, similar ring. It's kind of the way like you get like engagement rings and wedding bands joined together. It's like two pieces that kind of fit in. Uh -huh. I finish clipping it down onto it and scratch in the last couple of glyphs at the end it kind of pulses slightly and I hand it over to Puck you're already quite stealthy yes but if you can get a good beat of what's going on further down without them knowing then that puts us in a big advantage this will help you it'll make you blend in with the environment essentially like you're being unseen Definitely only lasts for an hour <laughs> the grin just <laughs> spreads across <laughs> Puck's face I got a plus 11 <laughs> oh what's <laughs> that yes sir only lasts for an hour or so uh, and I don't suggest taking any aggressive actions that could disrupt the uh, the enchantment but right if you'd like it's a kind of solo mission we need to try Um, I can cast invisibility. Invisibility. Awesome. Fucking hell. Good at stealthing. Okay. So, um, if that's the plan, are you casting it now? And uh, Yeah, I'll wait for Pucks. Yep. Yeah, I'm ready. Approval. You put it on and you've seen me tap the glyph on the back of it before and as you do it normally it's like that that pixelated pattern of like a rendering before an image changes but this time it pixelates and then parts of your background and the environment oh take nice. over your form so this is like full-blown uh what's the word like camo yep Re active reflective camo. like yeah, adaptive yeah. active camo yeah. yeah that's so cool Predators. Mm. love it all right. This uh, as could you, be very useful. You hear the voice come from nowhere. 
Um, I'm, cool. I'm quite proud of this one. Uh, so which direction are you nice. going, Puck? Unexplored or uh, back? I think I need... Sorry, what was that? Uh, the unexplored area to the south or or back? Oh, no, yeah, ba back out, I think, is the was the plan. Yep. Right, everyone? Like, we'll go back out and go down one of the other one of the other places sure. we haven't been out there. Sure. Yeah, we, we yeah. can either follow the Etten or go to where the, the guard was. I think that's probably a good place to investigate. Yeah, yeah, I think the guard well. makes like, more you've, sense. You've got an hour, so... Yeah. Oh sure, well, I'll. That's a bit of time. I will bring you guys. I'll tell you guys to come out. I think. Yeah. If, if you're happy to follow yep. and like come at least come into the main area. Um, you know, find a little out of the way spot to sit and wait or whatever. Um, I've got my horn of silent alarm, which I can. I'll, I'll let you know if I'm in trouble. Yep. Uh, that does have a range on it, which I'll have to look up. I think it's 300 feet, but it's a really decent way. I think. Oh yeah, yeah, it's no, quite long. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. I'm gonna go up to that northern section. Oh. But northern section. Sorry, the, the one with the guard. Yeah. Looking like five feet to your left, because I've already lost where you are. I'll just say, <laughs> like when you pass, when you pass back through, just let us know you're back. So if yes. there's trouble, we know which direction to run. Yep, absolutely. All right. Stay well, safe. I sort of like <laughs> touch you from the side. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, I could get used to this, and like I know he's invisible, but he puts down the the the, uh, the skull mask. Nice, you, just just a habit. <laughs> Kara and Ghost kind of just get a sense of like something dark is happening. <laughs> <laughs> the lights, the lights just, 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 just dropped a degree. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so you've got an hour of exploring. Um, yeah. So what I'm going to get you to do is. I think, yeah, you, you go off exploring. Um, we'll come to that. Ghost and Hera, is there anything you want to do during this time if nothing arises? Um, so you're kind of left in this cavern. You you feel it's relatively safe. Um, you know, you kind of tuck yourselves away a little bit maybe, but is there anything you two would like to do? You've got an hour. Um, obviously, Molokov and Vargir are there as well, um, being a little bit uninteractable, T-posing off to the side. Uh <laughs> there's anything you would like to do well uh, before we go into Puck's uh, little scout um, I'll pull Envy back out okay. just to play guard dog um, I guess the only way no the plan no. is just sit and wait for Puck to invisibly explore for about an hour I'm going to take that opportunity and just sit down and do some reading I'll probably find like a corner and just sort of tuck myself up and probably like let Molotov know where I'm sitting sort of thing and just be like you know you better say my name at least three times I will probably look up um, and I'll just sort of sit and... <laughs> I, I, can, I can see it now like Moloko definitely got in trouble at the uni halls once in a library or something and just is running down a corridor. Hair, 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 hair. Looks up from book, like, huh? what? I just said three times, that's enough. <laughs> uh, cool. Are you reading anything in particular or are you just uh, having a look over some um, stuff? So, I'm just going to out in the open. Remembering also that you have um, notes and field books of misc miscellaneous description. You know, you could just choose to do those. That might give you some information or, you know, are you, are you trying to discern anything or are you just having a browse? What, what's the what's the vibe of it? I suppose to be fair, knowing that it's only an hour, um, I... And just going to probably be just reading over, uh, like my spell book essentially, and and pulling out little bits of paper and and putting things back in almost like a little bit of an order, and, and just double checking I've got certain things written down, and, and yeah, probably not actually reading anything with intent, just sort of going over what's on my. In my little bag of, of spell book. No worries. And I'll, I'll kind of take half note of that and seeing that Hera's not doing anything super 
investigative and mysterious old ancient tomes or anything, I'll actually I'll pull out one of my bullets, and just while we're sitting and waiting, sort she's, of keeping she's just reading an eye around, <laughs> um, one of the three bullets I have left, and I'm going to start doing some calculations uh, and looking at my my final beat of force, and just putting some work into maybe formatting a way to turn that into a um, a projectile that I could fire. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. While you two work away on your own little projects, um, Puck, I'm going to need from you a stealth check, a mm. perception check, and an investigation check. Uh, is my stealth at advantage because I'm invisible? Yeah, it is. It is. Yes. <laughs> All right, so stealth check. Uh, that is a... Actually, my, the highest one is a nine. Say. So it's actually not that great. It's a modified 20. Modified 20. Still pretty Which darn still good. Very good. <laughs> yes. All right, so that's stealth. Uh, perception was the next one? Yes, please. Perception. That's a nat 20 for a total of 25. Very good. And what was the last one? Investigation. Investigation is a 10 plus investigation. 18. 18, okay. Okay, so stop me at any point if you wish to interact or do anything mm -hmm. in certain areas. <clears throat> mm -hmm. But as you move up to the north end of the cave, you walk mm -hmm. past an area where you guys all took a short rest. Um, and walking through some of the caverns, you can hear the water rushing. You know that this water makes its way through the mountain and eventually will get out. Flow down, past the village, down and out of the sea. Upon investigating the water uh, at a previous time with Vargir and also re-evaluating now, um, this water is clear. This water is fresh. Uh, there are little tiny little fish in it um, not abundant but creatures are living in and around this water mm -hmm. seems healthy seems healthy what's also interesting is that by the water you can see footprints and drag marks of people walking in formation and maybe being bound by their feet and shuffling along before long, uh, not before long, you reach a point where you can cross the river uh, via a bridge that seems to be activated from the other side. Uh, not activated, sorry, set up from the other side. You can see that drag marks have been pulled away as it goes up on the other side of the river. Yeah, you did discover this last session as well. I think between yeah. your grappling hook and your athleticness, uh, You'll be able to make your way across the river. It's a big solid rock in the middle of the river. You kind of hop, skip, and jump over it. The bridge is there for people that might not have as much maneuverability as you do. Mm -hmm. Coming up around the corner, you see a kind of web of caves, um, and you can see a little hunched black dragon creature. I'll show you an image now. You get a pseudo dragon. You get a pseudo dragon. You get uh, a pseudo. Not quite a pseudo dragon, unfortunately. Um, where is he? Yeah, just a little oh, guy. Nice. Just a, a like a an adult black dragon. Yeah. Is yeah. this the son of a bitch I saw earlier? Yes, it is. Like mm. scroll up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just posted again. Hunched black wings. Uh, looks like some kind of of scout or some sort. Uh, you see he's sorry. talking to someone in Draconic okay as you approach, I want to get close yeah you yeah, approach get close. Um, and as you kind of move a bit closer and closer you can see that your invisibility is going right over this one's head it has not passed its perception check um, so it does not notice you it pulls back a little bit in Draconic and you see in this web of caves there are about four of these creatures you can see 
Um, they all seem to have like a necklace around them with a little bit of moonstone on them. These ones are polished. Uh, and when they yell back to their comrades, you see bodies lying on the ground. They seem organized, almost. But they do not seem dead. They seem to be asleep. I'm going to show you the position because I think that's worth it for sneaking. But you basically see this. Just ignore that all the characters are on there. It'll just yeah, be yeah, you. Yeah. Nah, all good. This is the kind of vibe you get. It uh, seems like they've kept a lot of Dragonborn, proper Dragonborn, not Draconic uh, shapeshifters, that are in rags, they're in um, bounds and everything, but they seem all to be asleep under some spell, under some uh, gas or something. And do you, you, do you speak Draconic at all? I don't believe you do, do you? No. No. There is a conversation going on in Draconic. I think, yeah, let's add on another one. Let's go with an intelligence check to see if you can just... Intelligence or insight to see if you can pick up what they're putting down. That's the same. Uh, that's pretty good, though. That makes it a 19. 19. By their hand movements, and because you can get pretty close, um, you can mm. pick up their tone and everything... It seems like these are being prepared. They are not to be killed. You know, one almost tells one off when it, like, touches its dagger or something. But they need to be... It seems they need to be asleep for whatever they are needed for. Each of these uh, draconic creatures also gestures to, like, a pouch on their side, and you see that they have fine mushroom spores in that pouch. One moves over one of the, the um, dragonborn that are kind of starting to stir. They sprinkle it and they, they fall back asleep. Okay. As for anything else in this room, it kind of uh, ends at the top. Uh, it's a, it's a dead-end-ish. Uh, the way in and out would be through that river. Um, mm -hmm. That's kind of what you get from this space. Is there anything you'd like to interact with around here? What's this guy got on his pouch on his belt? Um, a dagger, uh, a pouch of the same stuff, um, and around his neck a moonstone carved. It's what you can see. Yeah, 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 yeah. How often does it like if I stand here for like? Oh, no, I don't want to waste too much time. But if I stand yeah, there for so you've only minutes, got an hour. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if I stand there for like a, a minute or so, and I go past this guy, and I'm kind of looking at these two, yeah. how often are they needing to re-sprinkle? They did that at once. Okay, cool. And it was for one person. that you know, And almost just kind of like made a little bit of a noise and stirred, and it kind of nudged the other one, and he went over and, and sprinkled it. But the rest of them are almost dead still. But you can, kind of, you can see the breathing going up and down mm -hmm, under... Mm -hmm. Not sheets, but like, you know. Okay. So it doesn't seem like it's like a apply every minute kind of thing. Yeah, okay. I think for... Oh my gosh. So what I'm tempted to do... I know. Is I'm tempted <laughs> to steal it, run around, knock this guy out, come back, knock this guy out, and then knock these two guys out. But I'm a long way from friends, and I don't think this is mission critical right now because these guys are just asleep, and that's okay. We can sort this out later. So I think I'm going to leave this okay. for now. Okay. I, I know that it's there, and I can come back and do that if I have time at the end. Uh, but I, I need to find where this Mike and bone is. So I think that's I'm going to leave this one for now. Okay. You head back. This is kind of a, a, yeah, not a dead end, but like this is what is north. You head back and um, you have to pass through, uh, assuming you're not going to swim down the river, but you cross the no. river again and you head back down and you see Ghost tinkering with a couple of things, some tools, you see Hera reading, and they don't even look up as you wander past. 
Um, yeah, I'm probably just going to go. Yeah. <laughs> The funsies, I just rolled a, a perception of like, how well am I keeping an eye out? I rolled an 18, it's a plus one. Even your yeah. your roll of a nine, I still don't know you exist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you move back through the cavern. So I'm going to keep those rolls. Okay. And. Okay. You head down the path to where the Etten ran off to. Tracks are kind of not uh, visible. Um, he was so small that it kind of didn't leave much of a mark. Mm -hmm. But you do know that that spell will wear off eventually. Not sure yeah. when. Heading down uh, the path, five, ten minutes pass. and starts to really start winding again. Before long, you're starting to kind of start to consider, you know, how, how much farther can I go before this thing will wear off? That north one maybe took five, 10, 15. Um, so you're kind of approaching halfway now. And you can hear the river ahead of you again. So the river must circle round. But before you get there, you notice a opening to your right. And within this opening, it, it kind of curves around a little bit. You see what almost looks like a gold hue reflecting off the um, the walls. Now, remember that the, the moon rock around this place is kind of giving off its own glow of that bluish mm. light. Um, but you see a kind of a goldish hue. Um, my question to you is, do you want to check that out or go to the river? I'll have a quick look. Got to have How a quick look. How far away is it? Uh, the, 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 the entrance is right here. Uh, but you've got to kind of yeah. go around the corner to, to check out what it is. Uh, okay, I'm going to just follow... Oh, man. Yeah, I'll have a quick look. I'll have a quick look. Have a quick look. Sure. You round the corner, and the first thing you notice is you're following the, the goldish glow on the ceiling and stuff, and you look down, and you can see red on the ground. And the red does look a little bit congealed. It looks like a trail of blood. You follow it up, and the cave opens into a kind of a, a spherical, um, what's a long, an oval-shaped room. And there are two things that you pick up. Three, I would say. One is the blood trails that are dragged across the ground. Two is the dead body of a creature that looks like a giant's head with an eye, almost like a cyclops, that has tentacles coming off it with eyes on the end, dead on the ground. And the third thing you notice is the mountain of gold in the corner. As you see, oh Jesus Christ, this. Now, I'm not displaying it for anyone else, but... Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, I've, I've highlighted the gold around here yeah. in white. Yeah, is that an entrance to something else behind? Uh, that no, it looks like it looks like a, a, the back of the wall. Yeah. All good, all good. Uh, mm. I'd say you'd probably be about around here at the moment. Yep. Coming back here later, but for now, I think I just got to keep going. i got to find um, where this thing is. Sure. It very much feels like that is the most important thing copy that but i will take note of that you back out not disturbing anything not touching anything pretty very good for a rogue almost a point of inspiration <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was tempted but you hear the water yeah and you follow along and the cave starts to get a little bit narrower a little bit narrower and as a halfling, you're noticing it, you're not feeling it as of yet, but you think your mm. bigger counterparts might have a bit of trouble the narrow we're getting. And the cave kind of almost turns up and comes up like a burrow uh, coming up where you can see some light and you can hear the water running. You pop your head out, uh, still being invisible. 
And the site you see... is quite a busy one. As you pop your head out, you see uh, a bunch of maybe two foot, three foot tall, um, quite cartoon looking mushrooms. Uh, they have the, the stem and then the big bucket helmet, uh, or bell helmet kind of thing. Um, the eyes don't look like they're, they're fully formed, but they kind of move along like snow white dwarves. Uh, and they are working. They are moving barrels. They are moving tools. In the center of the room, you see the river flowing through with a metal pipe shoved into it and green ooze pouring out of it. On the other side, you see a probably seven foot tall draconian uh, creature with plate armor on. Grey wings behind him and around his neck a hollowed out bone. And as he moves he picks it up and starts tuning it and the little myconids change direction and start doing something else. Uh, this is what you see. Uh, and I will put those three things you see into the chat. Oh, sorry, the two things you see. Uh, and where the characters are is where your head has popped out from. You're muted. I was like, that guy is badass. He's so cool, but he is. It looks like he's in charge. It looks like he is. Yeah. Commanding things. Okay. Nah, he's big boy. Big boy. As he like makes music with his flute, you see a couple of the, the little ones will like stay around him, but they are for all intents and purposes following exactly the direction as soon as they hear that tune. They switch they to the left, they pick up this. Yeah. Okay. Um I think Puck is probably going to observe here for like a minute or so, and then he is going to go back and let everyone else know where it is. He's not going to try and be a hero and do it on his own. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, uh, and then get I will say what you back. notice then mm -hmm. is like one of the little ones will go up into the space up here, and then you will kind of hear cutting noises and stuff. You don't see what's up around that corner, but it seems like they might be being forced to make each other some pollution mm -hmm. but you kind of dip your head back down and you make way back past the gold glow and yeah, yeah I'm, I'm gonna say now you got 10 minutes left on this invisibility yep i will get back to everyone and i will quickly say all right so there i'm back i'm back i'm back i'm over <laughs> here uh hera hera that's me yep good okay uh so there are three things one there is a room where the real dragonborn being kept under some kind of sleeping enchantment i think they might be using some of the micated spores uh that doesn't seem good but also not our most important priority right now the second is also not a priority but there's a lot of gold in one of the rooms but to the victor go the spoils and we are not yet the victor and lastly i found where it is uh there is a very large dragonborn he has the bone around his neck uh, and that's where they're doing the putting the pollution to the water i think okay. we should get over there uh but he's big he's the only one there that i could see uh and there's about eight or so mike in it but i think he might be able to make them hostile to us while he has the thing on his person but uh, i Sounds i might try and right. If we get there and I can sneak across, I can try and steal it. Even if I am or I'm not invisible at that point, I can try. Yeah, I'd probably uh, say you probably know getting back there now. Like, yeah, that, yeah. that's probably going to be the time up. Yeah, yeah all good. Um, I can try and steal it. Otherwise, we're going to have a fight on our hands. But it's only one one guy. And I mean, who knows what the Mykonids can do? Hopefully, they can't put us to sleep, but we'll see. You're saying they were responding to the, the sound like as he was playing? Yes. 
So, if in theory sound? couldn't make the noise, I think that might work. Definitely, some definitely worth trying. Uh, I like I like where your brain is at there. Uh, how many how many guards did you say there were around the real dragon points? There's four. Uh, two looking over them directly, and two others sort of on lookout patrol. slash patrol. And who is guarding the uh, the gold? Yeah. Uh, there's <laughs> blood on the floor and a, I don't know, I'm going to look, I'm going to make a roll. I was going to say, do, do, yeah, do a nature or history. Uh, let's go with a nature. That's a 17. Yeah. Di- uh, I, I, at least not a say, monstrosity, maybe. Yeah, a monstrosity of, of some description. Yeah, there's a giant mon- monstrosity, but I think it's dead. Uh, lots of blood, and it wasn't moving, and where its eye stalks like just all slack and limp, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and, and the, the, just, sorry, and also the blood led to it. Yeah, okay. It's not sleeping. It's got a lot of blood coming out of it, and it's completely still. Uh, so there's a giant dead monstrosity, which yeah. came out means something killed a giant dead monstrosity. I, I'm not saying we go there now. <laughs> yes, yes, something killed it. Right, and moved right, it. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Dragged it by the cool. sounds of it. And we're talking like like three of me, five Four. of me, <laughs> like eight of you. <laughs> yeah, big. Uh, that does not fill me with joy. I wonder if it could have been the essence. Anyway. Point. Anyway, let's let's get to the uh, the important place first, maybe. Okay. I've only got one of these, but I think you guys have a couple as well. From last we used it, sound didn't pass through the barrier. It was oh, the beat of force, uh, yeah. I have two, like a shield. I, I I do also have one of those. But we need to get the thing off off of him. Is the problem. And if it's locked in there with him. That's fair. How do you want to do this? Uh how oh. noisy was that that is that room, Reese? Uh pretty noisy. Like it's it's okay, cool. um they're reattaching barrels. Um you can tell that there's some kind of harm going in up in that cave. Uh the water's flowing. It, they're moving around. Yeah. They're, they're they're also like mining the rock as well. Like you can tell yeah. that like there's more production going on around it. Yep, cool. I think I might be able to sneak around behind him and so try to... For reference, it's around his neck. Yeah, I understand. Go, go. Try to reach up and take it off using like the rod or the uh, grappling hook to get myself to swing past or something. I suppose if, if we were to cause a distraction in front of him, could the... Uh generates a, a an opportunity you know a, a lack of, of uh, if, if he's using it to control the magnets i'd imagine if something's startled him or required investigation mm-hmm. probably the first thing he reaches for Puck yeah, then appears into this simply. conversation yeah oh. <laughs> i've been looking 10 feet in the opposite <laughs> yeah. direction Just too polite to uh, correct you um <laughs> Uh, I'll be, oh, uh, my back. I think maybe I can try and either take it off him or cut it off him, and then we can try and hit him with one of the, the. Uh, basically, uh, my I guess my thought DM is yeah. that if if I get it off him, like if I was to like somehow get behind him, cut it off with the uh, the rapier or something. Force. Oh right, yeah. Yeah. So 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 cut it off him with a rapier and then and then hit him with a bit of force. Yeah. Would it go into it with him? Because the way I have read what they do is that, like, the creature goes into the thing, but the things around them don't. And if it's no longer on his person... As long as you got it off him properly... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Even if it was flying through the air or something, if he's not in possession of it... Yes. 
it, the beta force will not it, capture it. Yeah. Uh, cool. All right. Well, yeah, maybe I can cut it off him or try and steal it off him. The only catch is I don't want to be next to him when that thing goes off because I don't want to be stuck in there with him. No, there's a there's a bit of a splash radius. We yeah, that, that, that out won't, last go, time. won't go well for me. Won't go well for him either, which is the point. We okay. still have to fight him at some point. Like, he's not going to... Uh, Disappear. Yeah. But at least it, that we can get this thing off him and, and have it ready for ourselves. Where's it some time? I can charge that up again, but it's going to use a lot of the energy I've got prepared. I think it'll disappear as soon as I throw the beta force at him anyway. I, I think that we're just going to need to maybe rely on my stealth. And if it doesn't go well, then it's we just have the fight on our hands that we would have if we ran straight in. So it is what it is. Hey. You've got a strong you feeling here. Uh, thoughts here? Yeah, yeah. You got you got any any special spells you you've been saving to use up? I uh, well, I mean, yeah, yes and no. Uh, I've uh, used quite a lot of my arcane energies for the day. Uh, There's only so much I can I can do. Uh, well, I need to rest myself, you know, it's a lot of work on my brain, but I mean, we've done, done this before, we've got out of shoddy situations with uh, not much skin left on our teeth or whatever they say, um, but I don't know, I, I think if we're fast, like you say, we can get the, uh, the bone off of him. That will mean we won't have the microbes to support them. Maybe we can use them to help support us. Uh, I don't know how well versed you are in, in controlling microbes with a bone, but certainly you know give it a go. I changed my mind. I'm done being conservative. These people are shit. Give that here. Um, I'll. Oh load in like three canisters onto the back of it and click each one you can see the glyphs light up again and sort of gain the charge back let's give ourselves the best chance of getting this done quickly and efficiently you've got the element of surprise you can get as close as possible give yourself the best chance we'll be right at the door if anything goes wrong i guarantee you something will go wrong but thank you let's get over there I'll lead the way back. I'll point out the other caves. Uh, so, so, yeah, moving back down that corridor um, as a group, you do notice it getting thinner and thinner, uh, but you do, before you get to that point, see that room that is giving that gold hue across the, the ceiling. If you want to pop your heads in, you can. Uh, remember that none of you are invisible at this point. Let's leave it now. I think any any other any other scenario if we hadn't just talked to a mic in it, it would absolutely Ghost sure. would be poking his head sure. in. But right now it's like no, nah, it's there's a bigger picture and a mission. It's the way you do things. Yeah. Okay. You get to the point where it it uh, curves up, the incline curves up, and you can hear the production and the movement of everything behind that or above that uh, place. So, I load a bullet into my gun. I flick the the glyph and I'll say, "Keep out of sight." You turn invisible. Okay. Let's let's take you to the let's take you to the map. Your eyes, Patrick. Oh. So, good call. You've now reset your invisibility. Mm -hmm. The Myconids move around the place. You see, as they're moving, they kind of almost uh, like they're stepping through goo as they step each time. A little bit of them is left behind, and then it 
snaps and and moves as they do through the earth what would you like to do okay all all, all okay. uh checks and stuff have been reset so like you're gonna have to yeah redo stealth and yep, things yep uh okay I think he's going to move over to like just sort of squatting behind these rocks just so that there's at least a little bit of cover around him and just make sure that no one's sure. noticing him. So I'm going to do an initial perception from the sprouts. Okay. That's 12. So can you roll your first per uh, stealth check? <laughs> Even That's... a natural one, they wouldn't. A <laughs> oh, natural one will fail. Well, it's a natural twenty, uh, oh. and that gives me a thirty-one. Oh, okay. Ah. <laughs> uh, Not you even accidentally. Um... It, it like step into the ethereal plane. Yeah, I was going to say <laughs> not even the vibrations you're leaving on the ground is sensing these guys uh, as they yeah. move around. So nothing changes in the behavior of everyone around. The draconian at the top surveys around, and you can see in his eyes he is assessing. He is switched on. He is not. He's probably yeah. following orders, but he is not uh, a clueless grunt. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Uh, next, I am going to run over and do just a little, little uh, a hop and over here. Cool. I'm going to say with your boots, that is fine. Okay. Uh, especially with that rock in the middle there. Um, but even as you go over, you notice that the water is not bubbling, but it's, it's congealing and moving, and it, it's definitely worse at this point, but the um, diced mushrooms are not mm. going well for the water. Okay. All right. Uh, I want to, like, okay. All right, all right, all right. So I'm going to get pretty close to this guy. Okay. And is he pacing or is he standing still? Um, I'm going to say he's he is pacing. Okay, cool. And those little guys are like in lockstep with him kind of thing? Like they're just sort of following him around? It seems like three of them are keeping as close as they can to him. Um, mm -hmm. But like I, I'm saying like from here to here, kind of pacing. Yeah, yeah, cool. All right. So how tall is the roof in here? I'm going to say what, 40 feet, 50 feet. All pretty, right. o pretty open space. Do it. Do it. Puck is going to sneak up. Okay, so the plan is I'm going to try and sneak up as, like, obviously he's moving, I understand that, but I want to get to a place where maybe when he, like, comes further up here kind of thing. Yep. Where I am, I'm, I want to stand, like, like right in front of this guy just as he kind of, like, stops his pace, has a little look around, you know, as the video game character does when they're doing their patrol. Yep. What was that? Walking the other way. Oh, yeah, yeah. Must have been the wind. All right. Uh, and this is the inciting incident. I'm going to stand in front of him, and the bone is hanging in front of him. It's hanging around his neck and is sitting like yep. here. Yep. And it's on just like on a cord. Seems to be on a cord. Okay, cool. What I would like to do is with my boots, I want to jump as high as I possibly can, grab it on the way up and over his head, and then with my other hand, shoot off the grappling hook and get pulled away from him okay i i understand you, you're jumping yep. and then you want to shoot this way don't you uh yeah i reckon i reckon i'll go that way if, if that's cool with you i yeah, think yeah, you, yeah, know, yeah. you want to go as far yep. away as you want uh and yep. zip line as, as quick as you can okay yep. so you're on the ground do you want me to tell you how, I, how high i can jump no, that's fine. I, I know exactly what it's going to do. Um, I'm just working out the the order of which checks are going to happen when. Mm -hmm. um, because he's got a different perception, and you've made your way over to him with that 30 is incredible. But I think jumping up is we're going to go stealth on the jump, perception. Okay. Do I want to... Do, I, think, I think dexterity to yeah, grab no, it. Fair. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if he passes his perception, he's going to contest that. 
Yeah, sure, sure, sure. All right, so stealth. So yeah, your stealth versus his perception. Um, you're invisible, so that's an advantage. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's a. Sorry, hang on. Uh, Seventeen on the dice, plus so twenty-eight. Okay. That's got to be almost impossible to beat. <laughs> Okay, so it was a 19 on the dice mm-hmm. uh, and plus four. Okay. So you jump up through the air and he kind of like gives a stretch and like yeah. puffs his chest out and this bone just sticks up a little bit and you grab it and yank it off his neck. Uh I'm going to say that's when you do that. The invisibility is going to yeah. change around and oh, he's okay. yeah. just going to look at you uh, like you've got it, you've got it in your hand. Um, and if as you comes do... Off, is that, that's not an attack? Is that... I mean, it doesn't really matter. I, I, I assume I'm about to be in combat anyway. I'm but... going to say yanking it off him. Okay, he's going cool. to notice it happening. Um, sure, 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 sure. I, turn think, around. I thought he would notice it at least, yeah. Yeah, fire... Yeah, it might be as soon as you fire the grappling gun. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Fire the grappling gun, which can connect over here, and you yank yourself out. He's not going to take an opportunity attack, of course, because he doesn't know you're there. Uh, yep. You land, uh, and he goes and roars out, uh, and that is where we're going to roll initiative and end the session. So he no! can join in. Ah. <laughs> uh. Oh, what a move! As you have that bone in your hand, well done. Well done. That was cool. That was real cool. I've become a lot less.